Lesson 10.3b, Generating a Random Sample Without Technology. Some ways to generate a random sample without technology would be roll number cubes, dice, flip a coin, pink samples from a bag or bowl, pick playing cards, use a spinner. Each time we roll a number cube, we have the same chance of getting one, two, three, four, five, or six for the outcome. Each time we flip a coin, we have the same chance of getting heads or tails for the outcome. When picking from a bag, bowl, or playing cards, all outcomes need to be included. Therefore, we must return the item to the bag, bowl, or deck to be random. So here we have a make pretend bag with numbers one through five in it. To pick three random numbers from the bag, we pick, so we would reach in the bag, we would pick a number, we would record whatever we picked, and then we would replace it into the bag before picking again. This way, each time we pick, we have a chance of picking a one, two, three, four, or five. We would have the same chance of picking any of those numbers. We can even shake the bag up to mix them up again before we pick then it will be random. So here we have a grid, a table with some numbers written on it. If we needed to generate a random sample from the number 10 to 30 using this table, we can write one through five on pieces of paper. We can put the papers into a bag or bowl. And we pick a paper to represent the row, return it to the bag or bowl, and pick a second paper to represent the column. So the first pick would tell us the row that the number would be in. The second paper we pick would tell us the column. So if we picked one as our first number, we know we're gonna be in row one. And if the second number we picked was a four, we would know our random number is 22. We keep doing this. We repeat this process to generate as many numbers as needed. To find the average of five random numbers, we pick a row and a column for each of the five. So that means we're going to be picking ten times, two times for each one. If we pick a one and a four, then that tells us our first number is a 22. If we pick a five and then a two, that's going to tell us the second number is a 20. And we keep doing this and we pick numbers out of our bag or bowl and we get our five random numbers. Now, to find the average, we divide their sum by five because we have five numbers that we have as add-ins. We get 102 divided by five, which is equal to 20 and 4 tenths for our average. We can also write the number from each cell onto a piece of paper and pick it from a bag or bowl. Just make sure to return the paper to the bag or bowl before picking the next paper. Now, though this method may seem easier because we're just directly picking these numbers out of the bag or bowl, it would take more effort to make 25 pieces of paper just to choose five. Now, if you notice, 20 appears three times. We have it here, here, and here. That means you would need three pieces of paper with 20 on them. Any numbers that repeat, here we have a 17 and a 17, you'd have to have two pieces of paper with 17 on them to match this table. It would be a lot easier to just make one through five and do the row and column thing quickly. We found the average of five random numbers to be 20 and 4 tenths. The more random numbers we use, the more accurate the average will be. If we added all 25 numbers on the table, our sum is 488. And if we divide 488 by those 25 numbers, we get 19 and 52 hundredths average. And that's close to 20 and 4 tenths. That's not too far away, is it? The more random numbers we use, the more accurate the average will be. In a shipment of 144 cookies, 10 do not meet quality standards. Maybe they're broken, maybe they're supposed to be round, and these 10 are not round. 
Well, the table below simulates the baker's random sample of 12 cookies to inspect. For the simulation, the integers 1 through 10 represent the below standard cookies, because there's 10 that don't meet the quality standards. So we can see the different numbers here in the table. In the sample, how many are below quality standards? So we look for integers from 1 through 10, because that's representing the below standard cookies. And out of all of these, there's only one cell that is 1 through 10, and it's this one. It's the 5. So only one is below quality standard. We just looked for the number that fell between 1 to 10. That tells the baker that 1 in each 12 cookies is probably not to quality standards. Now that doesn't mean that there definitely is 1 out of 12. That's just a random sample and it's a simulation. We're finished with Module 10 and we're moving on to Module 11 now. We're going to be analyzing dot plots in 11.1a. In the previous video, 10.3a, we showed how to find a random sample with technology using a graphing calculator. And when we did that, we had the same chance of getting those numbers each time. So we could get duplicate numbers. Same thing with doing it without technology. We need to put the number back in the bag, bowl, or playing card deck in order to get a true random sample so that we have the same possible outcomes. When we flip a coin, we can get heads or tails. We don't take tails away once we get it. Next time we flip the coin, we can still get heads or tails. It's very important to put that number or item back in the bag before you pick again. I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their day, and I hope you join me for Module 11. Bye.